What is the full spectrum of individuals that you've spent time working with on a one-on-one -on -one basis or through your practice? Mm -hmm. I worked with people out of MIT, incubators, CEOs, entrepreneurs, things like that. So a lot of high performance people, but then I've also worked with like losers, let's say. He's talking about whenever he did the stream with me. So this is also more intensely. This is everything yeah. from 25 year old kid who's living in his mom's basement playing video games all day to people who are yeah, see. even homeless. Um, so I, I worked with like basically like the whole spectrum and yeah. yeah. You use the word losers there and you did a little air quotes for anyone that can't see you um, right now. I'm really interested when you talked about incels as well, whether the way society is and the way that we're heading in terms of clarity over what it is to be a man has had any impact on those people that you refer to as incels. Like I'm, I'm you know, like, because we now have this digital world that we- I think that if you looked at most incels, and if you took like a graph of people that had a strong father figure and a, a, like a sample size people that had a strong father, father figure in their life and people who didn't, I bet the people who didn't, there's a lot more incels. I mean, I feel like it's like a fucking, like, there's no way that's not true. And live our lives in a Obviously, yeah. from the real world. And there's now more confusion than ever over what it is to be a man and the role of a man in a, you know, and then we look at the stats around suicidality. And I think in Europe, the biggest killer of men under the age of 45 is themselves currently. Mm -hmm. Is the shifting idea of what it is to be a man having an impact on people's sense of self and their purpose? A hundred percent. So the, yeah, there's, he's a, right. there's a crisis that's going on in men. And people think that this is new, but I don't think it's new. It's always been there. So if you look at like, you know, even 50, 60 years ago, 80% of mm -hmm. suicides are still going to be men. So historically, men have been killing themselves for like 100 years and no one's been paying attention. We're just noticing now because the problem seems to be getting worse. So... There's a couple of things that are really interesting to understand. So one is that if we look at what technology is doing to our brains, the first thing that it's doing is it is externalizing our attention. So if you look back, like let's say a thousand years ago, as human beings, we spent a lot more time with ourselves. So let's say that you and I go out hunting and then- let's Yeah, I always find it weird that people like, I, I realized this in COVID, and I, I like how many of you guys are like, like, I'm an extremely introverted person. I like being by myself a lot of the time. And I don't like surprises or things like that. I'm very much, uh, you know, basically a degenerate uh, hermit. And during COVID, I was like, this is great. Everybody is respecting my boundaries. This is totally fine. Nobody's imposing themselves on me. People aren't trying to get me to do things that I don't want to do. And I was happy. And then I saw all these videos of these people that weren't like me and they were having like these depression issues and they were like just getting sad, like, oh, I hate myself now. And it was so crazy for me to see that because I think that for a lot of people, they fundamentally can't understand the way that the opposite feels, right? Extroverts can't in understand introverts. And I, I think that also like this is a big spectrum. It's not like you're, you know, it's not like a binary thing, but like for me, whenever I was like, uh, whenever I would explain how I would feel to people, they would just tell me, oh, well, you just need to do it more or, oh, well, like they basically I would tell them how I would feel and then they would figure out a reason for why I felt that way. If that makes sense, they would try to be like, oh, well, you actually only feel this way for like this other unrelated reason. You know, just be yourself exactly and so like they they just could not comprehend the fact that i did not like what they were doing say so you shoot an arrow at a deer and you miss and then i shoot an arrow at a deer and i hit Got so in this moment i'm superior to you and then we pick up the deer and we're carrying it back and then we have about two or three hours to take that emotional insult and we kind of process it we just give our mind space to process it which it does automatically now, if you look at what happens in people's days, they don't actually have any time to process what happens to them because we are so constantly distracted by external things. That's so true. I, I don't know if, if you're like this, but I was in this point where I was idiotically efficient. So I would wake up in the morning and I would listen to a podcast while I'm like 
doing my exercise or whatever. And then even when I'm cooking, I'm listening to a lecture. Mm -hmm. And then like when I'm walking to the train, I have ear, uh, you know, uh, earbuds in and I'm listening to a lecture there on the train I'm reading. I wanted my life to be completely efficient. I didn't want to waste a single moment. I literally listen to the news in the shower. It's right. So we don't want to waste time. And so if you really think about it, where's the attention of your mind? Your mind is pointed outside of you. And so this is one of the reasons why I used to take breaks from streaming uh, is because like for me, and this is going to be like kind of, I don't really like talking a lot about this because I, I feel like the more I talk about how I feel, the more people realize that I'm insane. So like the more that I'm around other people, the more I hate other people and the more misanthropic I am. So like I, I will I, like, I will become like more hostile. I will become more of an asshole. I, I will just become more rude. Like I'll have more bad thoughts about things, etc. And whenever I'm not around other people, then I'm happy. So what I would have to do is I would have to just completely stop streaming. I would stop streaming. I would stop responding to people's messages. I would stop talking to people. I wouldn't interact with anybody for any reason. If they message me, I would just ignore them. And then after I did that for maybe like a few weeks or a month, then I would be happy again and I could deal with people again. And this was like a coping mechanism that I had. Now, obviously, as my life has evolved, I no longer have this coping mechanism. I can't do this anymore because I have too many responsibilities now. And um, I'm still an, I'm, I'm a pretty big asshole, you know, I am. And it's because I'm not able to, uh, I, I'm not able to be alone. Like if I, if I was able to just like stop, if I was able to stop making content and nobody could message me or talk to me for a month, I would come back and I would be much happier. Then what happens is once we do not pay attention to ourselves, we lose sight mm -hmm. of our internal signals. Literally in the same way that if you raise a child in a dark cave, yeah. the, the photoreceptors in their eyes won't develop. They will atrophy. So any t anything that the mind does not get access to will start to atrophy. If I don't practice Spanish, I'm going to forget Spanish. The mind is very, brain is a very efficient organ. So as we externalize our attention, we lose sight of our internal signals. We don't know who we are anymore. And now if I don't know who I am, how do I figure out who I'm supposed to be? Well, you have to watch YouTube shorts about Andrew Tate and Jordan Peterson talking about how to be a man. And that's what happens. I, I, I actually think that Dr. K here is bringing in a lot of really good points. And I think he's very right about this. Like, absolutely. <clears throat> I have the exact same response. I can tell you've changed. You're more blunt. You have a shorter fuse than normal. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, yeah, and I, I think what happens is like because people are never able to think about like who am I as a person, you know, they can never, you know, they just have somebody else tell them who they who they are instead. Now, boom, get diagnosed. Yeah, social battery is real. Well, I don't know whether it's real or not. Like, I, I can't talk about it for anybody else other than myself, really. But for me, it absolutely is is real, and um. Like, I also have a lot of, uh, like, for me, for example, like, I, I will have to do, it most days, I will have at least, like, 12 hours of my day that I don't really have control over in a way because I need to do something. And so, like, that's, like, and this is every day, right? I don't have, like, days where I have, like, a, a time off, right? Like, it's seven, seven days a week. Just live your life, be alone, don't need videos? Yeah, exactly. Is there any way you can change that? Not unless it is at a tremendous... The reason why I don't change it is because it would be at a tremendous detriment to other people who I care about and I want to help. Uh, that's the reason. I pay attention to the outside. Where are the answers? They're on the outside. So this person is talking about masculinity. This person mm -hmm. is talking about what it means to be a man. This person is talking about what it means to be a man. And now since I don't have any internal source of information, I'm trying to figure out what it means to be a man from the outside world. Yeah. And this is when men get truly fucked 
Because what it means to be a man, we are getting all kinds of mixed signals. So on the one hand, it means being physically fit. On the other hand, it means being a provider. On one hand, it means having sex with as many women as you can find. Yep. On the other hand, it means having sex with um, just one woman and being a really solid man. And being he's, good. by the way, he's, com he's totally fucking right about everything here. Absolutely. A hundred percent. Good father. And then there's also people telling us that being a man means that you're shit. Right, yeah. that you're toxic, that your testosterone level makes you violent, that you're evil, that you're privileged, that there's a patriarchy, all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So we're we're getting all this information from the outside about what it means to be a man. Yeah. And so the other like there are all kinds of interesting ramifications of this. So men in today's society are not allowed to complain. So if you complain and you're a successful person or a privileged person, everyone is going to think you're arrogant. Everyone is going to think, oh, my People God, hate you. who's this fucking guy? This guy doesn't know what my life is like. How does he have any right to complain? And even your mind will tell you this. You'll look at these people and you'll be like, yeah, I don't have a right to complain. But now yeah. we need to stop for a second and think. And this happens with everybody, right? Is that like, I mean, this happens a lot with me and I've learned this, is that like you, you can't look for sympathy in other people. You can never expect other people to understand what you're going through. You can never expect under, other people to like really care about you. You can only expect that you can care about yourself and do what's good for you. The moment that you put your well-being in the hands of somebody else, they're going to drop you. They're going to drop you. Whether, whether you like it or not, it's going to happen. True fuck everybody else? Yeah, exactly. And uh, I think this is especially true for, like, guys. And, like, as a streamer, right, it's, it's, like, super, super true. Because, like, whenever you're a streamer, people view it's like, oh, this is a really easy, like, bullshit job. And you just get paid a bunch of money. And it's like, you know, in a lot of cases, it's kind of true. But the reality is that that doesn't mean that that person is immune from having a problem with, with other things in their life. So what ends up happening is that, like, you're not able to have feelings you're not able to take things personally you're not able to be a person you you are a product and i think this is something that a lot of people have like other streamers and like content creators have a problem with is that they can't be a person and they try to be a person an object and yeah you are an object everybody is an object you are and i i, I think that there is this like people are trying to like hide from that reality, but you, you actually are, you're just an object. You're just a thing. That's it. And so it, it, as soon as you realize that, and you could just accept that, I think the sooner you can actually be happy and stop looking for other people to make you happy. Think about what it does to your psychology when you as a human being are not allowed to articulate yourself. Exactly. I've worked. With yeah. You can't tell people how you feel. You, you can't do that. And and the thing is that, like, maybe if you're really lucky, you can have, like, you know, a few friends and maybe, a, uh, you know, a significant other or a girl or a boyfriend uh, that you can tell some stuff to. Uh, that's the best case scenario. I bite you in the ass. Everybody know. Yeah, but you can never expect the world to see you and reinforce your existence. grown up in abusive mm -hmm. households where children will say to their parents, mommy, daddy, I'm hurting. And the, the parent smacks them across the face. How yeah. dare you? You're so lucky. You don't realize the sacrifices I make for you. It's exactly. traumatizing to the child when they say I am suffering and no one listens. This yeah, is nobody gives a shit. I, I used to have this happen too. Like um, anytime I would have a problem, there would always be somebody else who had a bigger problem and then my problem doesn't matter. And for a long time, it bothered me. It always would bother me whenever this would happen. But as I got older, I started realizing, like, the people that are telling you this, why do you care what they think anyway? Like, it's not, it doesn't really make a difference. Like, what, what is this? Like, are you, like, somehow, like, oh, that now they're going to totally get to, you know, they're going to understand you, or what's the point? Like, why, why are you trying to even make them see this in the first place? And I think that, like, yeah, tiered suffering is wild. Yeah, well, this happens all the time. Only women, uh, kids and pets get unconditional love. Uh, I, I don't know about that always. Why not? Because uh, this is my opinion. I think most people are very emotionally stupid. I think they're incredibly emotionally stupid. 
And they're also animals. I think people are fundamentally animals. And once you start looking at people like animals, then you can reorient your expectations for what they're going to do. And so that's how I see it. I, I view pretty much everybody as just an animal and that's it. And I, I don't I don't get disappointed about things or anything like that because that's just ah, uh, you know, that's just what an animal does. Just the way it is. It's probably a, probably like not a good way to look at things, but it's definitely helped me cope with it. That's not true for me. I've been in an army serve people that I would die for and care deeply for others. Or I said empathy for others, can't help it. it. Makes me very sad to think someone feels like they're not worth something. Yeah, I mean definitely everybody's gonna have a different experience, but that's just what I think. Slightly insane comment. Oh. It's what we're doing yeah. to the generation of men. People are saying, I am suffering. For a hundred mm -hmm. years, men have been killing themselves. 80% of suicides are men. The most dangerous thing here, yeah. for a man under 45 is themselves. And these people have been literally killing themselves because no one has been listening to them. So in the same way that you grow up with a, a, mm -hmm. a, as a child in a household that's abusive where no one takes you seriously, no yeah. one listens to your suffering, and now we even have successful men who are not allowed to complain. So the psychological impact is the same. Absolutely not. Yeah. If you're successful and things are going well for you, nobody will ever feel any pity or care about what's going wrong with you. Nobody will ever really give a shit. And to the extent that you look for their attention and you look for their sympathy, they'll hate you for it. It's the same thing with pretty girls, by the way. Like, how many times is, like, a pretty girl posted, like, oh, I hate myself, I'm so unhappy. And then a bunch of guys are saying, like, how can you be sad? You're so pretty. Yeah, it's the same thing. Anytime you have a human being who is suffering in some way and they cannot find mm -hmm. connection with another human being, they cannot find compassion with another human being, that person is going to feel isolated. And if you look at the statistics on suicide, it's very interesting. Of course. So the number one thing that correlates with male suicide is not depression. Balding. And this is super scary. There's one study I saw recently that suggests that 50% of men who kill themselves have no history or evidence of mental illness. Oh. And this, I, I believe the statistic in, in my clinical practice because I know what depression looks like. I know what bipolar disorder looks like. And half the men that I've worked with at least are not actually mentally ill. See, mental illness means a pathology of the mind, which means that the mind is malfunctioning. Most of the suicidal men that I work with, they're not Mal their mind isn't malfunctioning. They genuinely have a life that is no longer worth living. They're looking. Yeah, I never actually knew this is from the same podcast, the same video. But yeah, I remember seeing this, and people got mad at him on Twitter for saying this. Doctor K, they got mad at him for saying this. He's completely fucking right. He's a hundred percent right. Absolutely. Redditors were pissed about this comment. They were, and the reason why they were mad about it is that on the internet. There are certain, there are like a lot of different levels of fakery that exist on the internet. And this, it's kind of like in real life where like you're not supposed to act like, you know, whenever somebody says, how's your day? You're not supposed to tell them that like you've had a bad day. You're supposed to say fine. But like, that's not really the truth. And there's like a lot of these like lies that in society people are just expected to perpetuate. And I think one of them is that everybody's life is worth living and you should never feel this way. No, it's like I felt this way many times myself. I think a lot of you guys have probably felt this way, too. And it's not driven from like some sort of like weird, like neurological problem. It's just like I don't like where my life is going. I, I, I'm not happy. Right. Of course. Only every other day. Yeah, sure. It, 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 and, and that's just this logical perspective. It's not like. You know, I'm feeling sad because, you know, uh, I didn't get something I wanted. Things lack of hope, yeah. Realizing that there's no way out of the situation. Yeah. So they turn to suicide. So I know it's kind of like a very controversial statement, but I think that's what my clinical practice has shown. And there's some research to even back that up. Yeah. So if we sort of look at what's going on with men, we're sort of, they have nowhere to turn to. And the number one thing that correlates with it is not mental illness, but is a sense of thwarted belongingness. So this is kind of like fact- uh, for me, like, this is the way I always felt. I was always like, well, why do I want to keep going in life when every single thing that's bad hasn't happened yet? Like, I, I've had all of the good things happen in my life, and now, now it's just going to be all of the bad things. And, and I feel like, yeah, that's it. And, and really, you think about it, it's kind of true.
you know, what's there to look forward to? Exactly. Yeah, it's coming. Yeah, it's just going to keep getting worse. So, yeah, of course you'd feel that way. Multivariate regression analysis. But basically what happens is what causes people to kill themselves is they try to connect with others and they get rejected. So it's specifically a, a very oh, specific yeah. research term called thwarted belongingness. So I try to belong to a group and that group or multiple groups usually will, will thwart my attempts to join the tribe, to join the community. And this is what actually correlates a lot with suicidality. So what's going on with men right now is that we really don't allow them to suffer you know, because then you're not manly. And we're so externalized with our attention that we're not connecting with ourselves. And so we're looking to other people Internet to tell dads. us what it means to yep. be a man. But that may or may not work for you, right? That may have been what worked for them. So then we kind of get into this problem where we're disconnected from ourselves. And then like the world doesn't accept us. We're not allowed to suffer. And that's what creates the problem. Mm -hmm. What is the remedy to this? So I think the first thing is we must reconnect with ourselves. Right. So when you're kind of saying, like, why do, does everyone think, oh, I, I need to, like, achieve this, I need to make this money and things like that. Where did you learn that you should do all that? You learned all that from the outside. Instagram. Instagram. Right. So we get we get fed all of these ideas, because if you look at all these influencers, what are they doing? They're never crying. They're smiling. Some of them will even pay. Well, whenever they are crying, people hate them for it. Because as an influencer, you're not a person, you're a product. You're an object. You're like a thing. And the moment that you try to be seen as a person is the moment you stop being an influencer at that point. Because people aren't going to see you as a person. You're a thing. You're a commodity. You're an entity. You're a consumable item. It's like a, a can of soda. That's it. Is this how you view yourself? It is. And I think that as soon as I started viewing myself that way, my relationship with streaming improved a lot. That's why I stream every single day now and I stream for multiple hours and I do all kind I, I'm making more content now than I ever have. It's because I stopped trying to be a person and I just started being what I, I started. I started just like creating good content, like making things or at least what I think is good content, what I think is interesting uh, is I started focusing on that rather than, you know, getting my own emotions and feelings about it. Like I, I and, and this is something that I've learned over the years is that there's never been something that like the way that I felt about something emotionally with like my stream ever made like my my life better in any any way ever. You have to separate the two? Oh yeah, yeah, it's always good to have a good separation. And I see streamers that uh do you think men take life too seriously? I do. I think that so many people like uh, I've known a lot of people like this in my life that they're so worried about missing out on life. They're so worried about like, oh my God, I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to do that. And they're so stressed out about that. And for me, like, I, I feel like I, like I had a lot of things that I was hoping to have happen for me in my life that didn't happen. And it happened so much that it made me realize that I can never actually live the life that like, you know, the perfect life. And so I just stopped trying to do that entirely very attractive women to take pictures with them well yeah. some of them are crying but they're crying and uploading it for ulterior motives right absolutely they definitely and i think are. a lot of them are genuinely suffering too but then it's oh yeah absolutely somebody in chat brought up a this is an older viewer um yeah you remember this so um remember whenever some of the ogs turned on you the moment you spoke about pink sparkles do you think that affected the reason to be less personal on stream in regards to the subject well here's the thing is that there is no fucking chance that any girl would want to be in like a public relationship with me unless she was fucking crazy. And to be honest, actually just me in general. It's like I say I only date crazy girls because the only girls that would date me are crazy. And that's a fucking fact. But the truth is that, yes, whenever I started dating this girl, holy fuck. Holy fuck, people went absolutely insane about this. They were so, so mad about it. And uh, Crazy goes exactly. And um, anyway, uh, me being less personal about it, not necessarily. I just like... <sighs> it, it was that bad? It was. Uh, people absolutely hated her. And then like the problem is that 
then she was getting a lot of hate and then she'd be mad at me. And it's like, yeah, of course, because it's from my community. Yeah, it was really, really bad. It was awful. Well, she used to seem chill. Yeah, that's because you weren't, you're not the people that like, whenever I brought her on my stream, tons of people stopped watching and they were really mad about it. They were like, I can't believe you would talk to her. Like, this is wrong. Like, she's just using you. Like, and yeah, they were really, really mad. And I guarantee you, if I ever get a girlfriend again and she's on stream, people are going to say the same thing. And there will be people that will stop watching me because of that. What the fuck? No, it's just the way it is. You get mad about it. That's just the way it is. Why? Why is because they have a personal relationship with you. And I think also a lot of guys, if it's a hot girl, they're going to get jealous. And so then they're like, well, he shouldn't have that girl. That's not fair. I hate him now. It's really easy. It's super easy to do that. It's parasocial. Yeah, yeah, definitely. They think that you're betraying the incels, of course, right? It's parasocial stuff. Well, that's the way it is. Was this recently or years ago? Both. Uh, it happens all the time. It's also like, I mean, there's all kinds of mm -hmm. weird stuff going on. So one thing is like people say that men, is, men we don't allow men to be emotional. Nowadays, yeah, but because they, people say, oh, men are allowed to cry. No, they're this not. This is something that I experienced no, even not. in my marriage where we allow men to cry, but we don't allow men to be angry. But why is it are men no longer allowed to be angry? You just think about it for a second. So <laughs> I wonder anger why. is just a completely normal emotion, right? But if I'm in a situation where I'm in an argument with my wife yeah. and I feel emotion A and I express emotion A and she feels emotion B and she expresses emotion B, these two things should be equal, right? We as both human beings get to express what we feel. Now, in the case of me expressing anger and her expressing sadness, she's crying and I'm yelling suddenly i've become a villain it's so interesting i saw a viral tweet yesterday it was someone googling yeah for wife. me like i'm kind of a weird guy and you can ask any girl that i've ever talked to or anything like that i have never yelled at another person in my life um outside of like in a video game raid or something like that and even that is in like a video game right so like, I'm talking about, like, personally. Like, I've never yelled at another person. I, I just, why not? Because the reason why not, actually, is because if I get really mad at someone, I will want to kill them. And I don't have, like, an off switch for, like, my emotions. So I, I keep myself, like, really, really low. That's the real reason. It's like, if I get really, really angry, that's the way that I'll feel. And so I just try not to feel that way. Rosie's red. Yeah, I get really, really mad, and so that's why I that's why I stopped doing that. And I I realized that whenever I was like a little kid too, and so that that's the real reason. Fair. Yeah. Yeah. No. That that's that's actually it. If is yelling at me, what should I do? Mm -hmm. And then my husband is yelling at me, what should I do? Right. When they googled, my husband is yelling at me, what should I do? domestic violence helpline comes up it's like a google <laughs> yeah yeah um, i've seen this uh, pop up when you google my wife is yelling at me what should i do nothing comes up yeah because well and also like another big reason for this is because if you look at deaths and domestic violence it's like probably 90 percent women that are getting killed like oh, there are women a lot of women initi initiate domestic violence but way more men finish it Way more men finish it. That's just the way it is. It's because men are bigger and stronger. That's the way it is. In, as you said, in the case of villainization, I know mm -hmm. that most domestic violence comes from men, but it's it's interesting that we see the emotion, we interpret the emotions entirely differently because of that. Absolutely, yeah. right? So we as a society will say like, oh, men, men need to be in touch with their emotions, but not anger. And then this is what really screws men. Because as men, we are socialized and conditioned mm -hmm. to only feel anger. This is the only emotion you are allowed to feel as a man growing up. And this is the one emotion that gets demonized when you're older. So I'll give you a simple example. So like I used to get bullied a lot, right? So mm -hmm. when I get bullied in school, like what am I supposed to do, Stephen? In school, well, it depends if you can fight back. Absolutely, yeah. right? It's fighting back. Like you didn't say talk to the teacher. You didn't say 
ask for help. You didn't say cry about it because if I cry about it, what's going to happen, Stephen? You're going to get bullied more. Absolutely. So we turn every emotion. So men experience anger is something called an umbrella emotion. We literally suppress and are conditioned mm -hmm. to suppress all other emotions except for anger. And then if you talk to men about their experience of life, anger is always the first thing that comes out of their mouth. Yeah, for me growing up, I was taught very much don't get mad. Don't yell at people. Don't act this way at all. Like for me, that was the case. Like, yeah, it was don't don't act like anything. Right. If you get upset or anything like that, it's a very bad thing to have happen. Don't get mad. Get even. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's basically what I was taught growing up. Exactly. Did you ever throw your skateboard? Yep, absolutely. I threw it at other people even too. At, at the at the park. Yep. Someone breaks up with you. How do you feel about it? Do you feel mm -hmm. ashamed? No, that's not what we say. I feel pissed off. How could she do this to me? And then we mm -hmm. vent that anger on the internet and then this turns into misogyny, right? And then we get demonized for it. And it's not yeah. that there isn't, a, it, we should be harshly judged if we act on those kinds of emotions. I'm not saying that that's the case. But what we also need to consider is that the men who are saying these kinds of toxic things are saying that for a reason. This is because of their upbringing. This is because of the world that they lived in, right? So we're conditioned to- Yeah, I think this, I, I think Dr. K brings up a really good point. And it's because like guys can't really have any sort of, uh, they, they can't really have any sort of like outlet for these emotions. And if they do have the outlet, everybody hates them for it. I think that's what, that's what happens more than anything else. I've destroyed everything I ever bumped against my head, rip every cupboard ever. Oh yeah, I've broken tons of stuff too. Uh, it's been fine. Didn't touch on a cheating. If a guy's pissed because a girl's cheating on him, then he's the reason. Well, I, I think also the issue is that, like, I, I think that a lot of times, like, girls will defend other girls for things that they shouldn't be defending. And they'll try to, like, see it from the other perspective. And I, I see this happen with, like, guys as well. It's like, you know, whenever Chris Brown beat the shit out of Rihanna, they're like, yeah, but what did she say to him? It's like, <laughs> stop it. Stop it. Fucking stop it. What do you mean? What did she say to him? Yeah, she started it. No, I don't want to hear that. And um, it's crazy the way that people would do this. And uh, I, I think it's just so insanely fucking toxic, too. Only experience anger. Even sadness gets turned into yeah. anger. Shame gets turned into anger. Fear gets turned into anger. Right. Mm -hmm. So if I'm afraid of something happening, what do I need? I need man up. Get angry, right? Like, let's go, son. Let's go. Yeah, This that's is the emotion right. that we tap into to overcome fear. So we don't feel yep. any of those other emotions, and we're left only feeling anger. At the very heart of aggression. Um, and the thing is that, like, whenever you act on that, everybody hates you for it, too. Like, this is the thing. And, uh, I, like, I, I've had this experience happen myself. Like, I remember one time we were playing baseball. And this, the, the person who was like pitching the baseball was talking shit to me. They were making me mad. And so I was actually pretty good at it. And so I hit the ball directly at their face. And bro, like there was blood on their face. Like I was like seven or eight years old at the time. I hit them and I was like, bro, whenever I hit them, I was so fucking happy. I was like, yes, I got them, right? And then everybody was like, you're fucking like, how did you do this? How could you do this? You're such a bad person. And nobody liked me after that. Couldn't do that twice? Well, I did it once. That was enough. Yeah. And so if you act on these emotions, people won't like you even more. That's it. Left well, after Hari, it was a good one. Yeah, dang. Did you like yourself? Well, yeah, of course. So yeah, you can never act on the emo. If you act on your emotions, it is, in my opinion... Nine times out of ten, a bad idea. Nine times out of ten, always a bad idea. You hit him on, on in pace uh, on purpose. Yeah, of course. Duh. Wh where else would you want to hit him? I had someone say to me once that at the very heart of aggression is some kind of insecurity. Mm -hmm. But for men, when they encounter that insecurity, but, they nah. only know how to sort of manifest it as aggression. So I wouldn't agree with the first thing that at the heart of all anger is insecurity, but I would absolutely agree with the second thing yep. that 
the way that we, the only way we know how to respond is with anger. Because yeah. Here's the exact quote, just found it. The source of aggression is insecurity. As we are unconsciously aware that our position in life is never secure, people feel in increasingly insecure and helpless. So they will be increasingly aggressive mm -hmm. and confrontational at a personal and a social level. So let's tunnel down into that. I think second. that's true. Okay, so I think that that is true on some yeah. level, but also I would disagree. So the first thing is that we have parts of our brain, even animals feel anger. But I think that like when two dogs are fighting over territory, I don't think that that's born of some kind of identity of insecurity, right? So if we really look at like the evolutionary purpose of anger, this is my opinion, is that anger is the emotion that we feel to protect our territory. It's a protective emotion. So if I slap you across the face, what's the first thing that you're going to feel? It's going to be anger. So if I insult you, you're going to feel angry. It, it's fascinating the way that it works. So anger causes our thoughts. I do to feel like most people are angry at someone who like poses a threat to them in one way or another. I, I, I do think insecurity comes from a lot of the places of like being angry. Yeah, even a dog would be insecure if it's territory. Be faster. Anger causes our peripheral vision yeah. to collapse to 30 degrees. So I only see what's in front of me. And it also makes me less uh, sensitive to pain. So like my nociceptors will actually like start to be suppressed when I feel angry, right? Mm -hmm. So if I get into a fight, I'm going to feel it tomorrow. But like while I'm getting hit, I'm not going to feel it. So I don't think it's born of all insecurity. I think anger is simply an evolutionary response. It, it's, it's something that we experience to protect ourselves. That's why we feel angry, right? So if I attack baby bear, mama bear is going to come out angry. So it's, it's really a protective emotion. Now, I agree with the second part of the statement 100% that when we mm -hmm. feel insecure, especially as men, the only way we are taught to deal with our problems is through anger. Right. So if I'm feeling insecure, if I'm feeling ashamed of myself, if someone's bullying me. What do I yeah, do? For I... me growing up, this was not an option. Like uh, this is not the case with me, like because I, I would get bro, like it, like the only way I could get mad and it was OK is if I could maybe throw my controller around or, uh, you know, like hit my keyboard. That was it. Anything more than that was not allowed. Put them in their place. Right. I don't try to make peace. I don't complain to someone because no one's going to take me seriously, mm -hmm. right? I have to stand up for myself. So we've got the first point there about how we remedy this challenge, which is about self-expression, more self-expression. That's what I heard. Not self-expression, introspection. Introspection, getting to know right. ourselves. Right, so, so it's very simple. So if you look at your idea of what it means to be a man, mm -hmm. what percentage of that idea comes outside of you? <laughs> and what percentage of that idea comes from within you? About 90% comes from outside of me. And that's why 90% of people, we're 90% fucked, right? So, and if you look, and I'm sure you know this, and you've probably done this too, if you look at where is the goodness in your life, where does it come from, Stephen? It doesn't come from what other people have told you. They may have told you something, but then you looked within yourself and then you found that to be true. Usually yeah. comes from Chipotle for me. Uh, that's, I would say, most of the time, or maybe McDonald's. But uh, yeah, I mean, sometimes other people can say something nice too. Sure, that happens. The goodness in you, the motivation, the really good motivation in you, not chasing things, but the, the duty that you have, you know, everything that mm -hmm. you really strive for, all that good stuff comes from inside you. And the problem is that we live in a world that pulls our attention away from ourselves. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. If you love the Driver CEO brand and you watch this channel, please do me a huge favor become part of the 15% of the viewers on this channel that have hit the subscribe button. It helps us tremendously, and the bigger the channel gets, the bigger the guests. Yeah, that's actually, that's 15% that's is pretty good. Uh, I'll go ahead and link you guys the video. Yeah, I, I wanted to uh, want to watch this. I thought it was kind of interesting, and uh, it got recommended to me kind of randomly, and uh, I figured I would talk about it because I think there's a lot of people that feel that way too. Interesting conversation. Yeah, 15% is very good. It is. I would say so. Recommend you a full podcast off stream. It's awesome. Yeah, this is a great, uh, this is a great, great little podcast. Diary of a CEO clips. Which percentage of people watch your YouTube or subbed? I have no idea. I don't, if you want me to be honest, I don't even look at my analytics. I don't look at my analytics. I just look at like how many people, what do people think about the video? They like it? Okay, cool. And that's about it. Yeah, you unliked? Oh, I did. I didn't realize that. Yeah, there we go. Join us case, external motives uh, won't last forever. Internal ones are more consistent and are better driving force through hard times. For me, I just, uh, 
I try to not think about the way that I feel as much as I can. And ju I just kind of try to act and like just do things. And then generally I, I found that like the more that I sit around and like think about how I feel about a situation, the worse I will feel. Like things will just be worse. It's not like there's ever, there's never going to be a point where like I can think about this enough to where like, okay, finally I'm happy. Can you vent to people in your personal life? I never do. I never do Out, outside of like very surface level things. Like, you know, there's a lot of stuff I'm dealing with. It's kind of annoying. I'm stressed out. Like other than that, no, never.